Welcome to my video on optimization. In this example we have a farmer and the farmer wants to put a fence around a field and this field has an area of 722 meters squared. We also know that one side of the field runs along a river and does not need fencing. The question is what is the minimum fencing required to enclose the field? And the first thing I like to do is to draw a picture. So that's why I drew a picture for you here on the left. And notice how we have this river in blue. And we also have this fencing enclosing the field in dark red. And notice how there's no fence running along the river. So first, let's label everything in this picture. Now let's see what this question gives us. Well, we know the area of the field is 722 square meters. So this area inside the field is equal to 722 meters squared. But we don't know the length of the sides of the field yet. So I'm just going to label the right side of this field a length of x, and then the bottom side of the field I'm just going to label with a length of y. And we know this is a rectangle, so if the right side of the field has a length of x, that means that the left side of the field also must have a length of x as well. So now that we labeled the picture, let's take a look at all of the steps that could be used to solve any type of optimization problem. So here I wrote for you all of the optimization steps, and step number one says to find the equation to maximize or minimize. So if we go back to our example, uh, what equation do we have to maximize or minimize? Well the question says, what is the minimum fencing. So we need to minimize the length of the fence. So how do we find the equation for the length of the fence? Well, we know the fence, which is in dark red, is equal to the perimeter of this rectangle. So the fence is just equal to the perimeter. So to find the perimeter we just have to add all of the sides. So we have two sides with a length of x, which is equal to 2x. And then we have to add that with the third side of the rectangle, which is equal to y. So 2x plus y is equal to our perimeter. So this is our equation that we have to minimize, 2x plus y. And now we're ready to move on to step number two. So step number two says to reduce the equation to one variable. So if we go back to our example, uh, this equation which we're trying to minimize has two variables. It has an x and it has a y. So we need to reduce this so it only has one variable. Well, in order to do this, we need some other piece of information. So what does this problem tell us? Well, notice how it says it has an area of 722 square meters. So the area of the field we know is equal to 722 square meters. And we know that the formula for area is just equal to the length x times the width y. So we know that the formula of area is x times y, and this is equal to 722. So now we can solve this equation for x or y, and then we can plug this value into our fence equation, so then we reduce it to one variable. So let me show you what I mean by this. I'm just going to solve for y. So I need to get rid of the x, so I'm going to divide both sides by x. So notice on the left how the x's cancel each other out, and the only thing we're left with is y, and y is equal to 722 over x. So now we are ready to reduce this fence equation to one variable. So this fence equation, which I'll label as f of x, is equal to 2x plus y. And we know that y is equal to 722 over x. So I'm going to replace this y with 722 over x. So now this equation has been reduced and written with one variable x. But before I move on to the next step, I want to simplify it just a little further. So our function is equal to 2x. And I want to get this x out of the denominator and write it in the numerator. So Instead of writing it in the denominator with a positive exponent, I'm going to put it in the numerator with a negative one exponent. And the reason why I did this is because it's easier to take the derivative, which we're going to do later on in this problem. 
So let's move on to step number three. So step number three says to find the critical values. This means to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So let's go back to our example. We need to take the derivative of this function f of x. So the derivative of the function f of x is equal to the derivative of 2x, which is just 2, plus the derivative of this term. So we need to multiply this negative 1 exponent with a positive 722, which is equal to negative 722. And then we need to reduce the exponent by 1. So negative 1 minus 1 is equal to negative 2. So now, in order to find the critical values, we need to set this derivative equal to 0 and solve for x. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this negative exponent. So we have 2 minus 722. And instead of a x with a negative exponent in the numerator, I'm going to put x with a positive 2 exponent in the denominator. And this is all equal to 0. So now we just need to solve this equation for x. So I'll bring the x term to the right side. So I'm going to add 722 over x squared to both sides. So on the left side, they're going to cancel each other out, and we're left with 2. And on the right side, we have 722 over x squared. Now we need to get rid of this x in the denominator, so we can multiply both sides by x squared. And on the right side, the x squares cancel each other out. And on the left, we have 2 times x squared, which is just 2x squared. And this is equal to 722. And now, in order to get x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 2. And on the left side, the 2's cancel each other out, and we're left with x squared. And on the right, we have 722 divided by 2, which is equal to 361. And now to get x by itself, we need to get rid of the squared. So to get rid of the square, we need to square root both sides. And the square root of x squared is just equal to x. And this is equal to plus or minus the square root of 361, which is equal to 19. So our critical values for x are positive and negative 19. But we know that this value cannot be a negative number, because this value for x is a distance, and a distance can never be negative. And if we go back earlier in the problem, notice how this value for x is a distance, and a distance has to be greater than 0. You can't have a negative distance. So this is why we know that this critical value, which is negative, is not possible. So I'm going to eliminate this negative critical value of nine, a negative 19. So our only critical value is positive 19. So now we are ready to move on to step number four. Step number four says to verify if the critical values are maximums or minimums. So we need to go back we need to verify if this critical value of positive 19 is a maximum or a minimum, or possibly neither. And what I like to do is the second derivative test. We can use the second derivative to see if this is a max or a min. So I'm just going to rewrite our first derivative. Our first derivative of our function was equal to 2 minus 722 times x with a negative 2 exponent. So in order to find the second derivative, we just need to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of 2 is equal to 0. And the derivative of our next term is equal to negative 2 times negative 722, which is equal to positive 1444. Then we need to reduce the exponent by 1. So negative 2 minus 1 is equal to negative 3. So to verify if this critical value of positive 19 is a max or a min, we need to plug it into our second derivative. So if we plug positive 19 into our second derivative, we get 1444 times x, and we need to plug in 19 for x, and then it has a negative 3 exponent. And if you plug this into a calculator, you're going to get a positive value. It doesn't matter the exact value, but it's going to be positive. If the second derivative is positive, that means our critical value is a minimum. Once again, if the second derivative is positive, that means that our critical value is a minimum. This critical value of positive 19 is a minimum. 
which is good because our, the question is asking us to find the minimum fencing. So this critical value had to be a minimum. So now that we know our minimum value for x, it's really easy to find our minimum value for y. We can just use this equation and plug in x to find our y value. So y is equal to 722 over x, and we know our value for x is equal to 19. 722 divided by 19 is equal to 38, so we know our value for y is equal to 38. So now that we have our values for x and y, we can answer our question. The question was asking us, what is the minimum fencing required? So we need to plug in our values for x and y into our fence equation. Well, we know that our value for x is equal to 19, and our value for y is equal to 38. So we have 2 times 19, which is 38. 38 plus 38 is equal to 76. So what is the minimum fencing required to enclose the field? This is equal to 76. So in other words, this field with an area of 722 square meters is going to take at least 76 meters of fencing to enclose it. So I hope this video gave you a better idea on how optimization is used. I do have four other optimization videos as well. In one example we find the maximum volume of a box. In another example we find the minimum sum given two numbers. I also have a video finding the minimum time to cross a river, and I have a business example as well where we find the maximum profit given the cost and demand. So check these out if you want. All the links are in the screen. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.